I think you have to reach a breaking point to realize life is not meant to be sitting around not doing what you love. I reached that breaking point last year, packed up all my things, and moved to New York with one simple goal. Do more of what you love. I truly let the universe take the wheel, and let me tell you, the universe drove. She took a road trip. And now I'm here to sit down and tell you exactly where that got me. Hello! Oh yeah, baby. We about to get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so it's a rainy day in New York. I literally got caught in the rain earlier today. I wish I had a video to show you, but my phone has tons of cracks in it. And if I bring it out in the rain, it's gonna, it's just gonna die. Uh, forever. I got caught in the rain today. It's fine. You know, the funny thing about getting caught in the rain, I'm usually the person that's like trying to find the nearest scaffolding. But today, I had no choice. I just had to like throw my hands up in the air and just be like, Ava, you're gonna get wet. That's just the type of day it is. I just made a chai latte and burned it, boiled it to a crisp. Apparently you can't go two minutes leaving liquid on a stove. It's probably gonna be way too hot. Hmm. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, it tastes pretty, pretty fine. Yeah, it tastes fine. I don't usually do life updates, but if I was to do a life update, this would be the perfect time. The last couple months of my life have been some of the most exciting months in years and the most life-changing months in, in literally years. Maybe everyone feels like this, but I just feel like my life goes in these patterns. Nothing is happening. And then all of a sudden, literally everything is happening way too fast, way too much. Everything I'm gonna get into in this video, I have filmed. Trying to edit everything myself and also actively be present in the moment and just enjoy and focus on what is like all the craziness that's happening. It was really hard. So now that I'm back home and not traveling the world doing this, I can sit down with you guys and actually share what has been happening and how my life has been totally flipped upside down and completely changed. Now, the funny thing about this life update video is that the past two or three months of my life have been so legendary, iconic, everything I ever wanted, life-changing, transformative, the rebirth of myself. And while all of these amazing things have been happening in my life, I would be lying to you. If I didn't tell you, the last two months of my life have also been extremely overwhelming. I thought about giving up so many times the last couple months. I felt like I took on way too much. I felt like I took on things that I wasn't ready for. I've had to battle intense imposter syndrome. Mental health has been pivotal in this last couple months. I didn't have a strong mental space. I really don't think I would have been able to do what I accomplished in the last couple months. All this to say, speaking of mental health, that brings us to the sponsor of this video, which is BetterHelp. You guys already know I love BetterHelp. I used them back in 2022 when I was nomadic. Whew. Child. <laughs> Every single time I've ever had a therapist, it has benefited me so much more than I could have ever imagined. Growing up having all of this intense, deep-rooted trauma, it made me get older and be like, oh, I don't need therapy because if I can get through this by myself, I can get through anything by myself. But that is not true. It's this misconception that you only need therapy if you're going through something like super, super hard. But the reality is life is hard enough, okay? At the bare minimum. It really is. Even the simplest things can add up and be extremely overwhelming and completely put you in a bad mental space. Like it's easy to be overwhelmed. And it's like, even if you know, you're like planning a wedding and maybe having a baby and that can also bring a whole set of challenges. And it's the perfect opportunity to speak to someone. Therapy helps. Regardless of if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, we are all just humans trying to live in this world, trying to get by and be happy. And therapy can really give you the tools to approach your life in a completely different way. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And that's an important mission because finding a therapist can be so hard. I know, I know. I've been to some very weird therapy offices and they've scarred me. Especially if your options are limited in your area, it's just difficult. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier than ever because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you with a professional therapist in as little as a few days. Guys, it's super easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. You can easily switch to a new therapist at no cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, things like that. In my experience, there's been times when I've only seen my therapist for like three different sessions. Just within one, two, three sessions, I completely changed my life. Don't think that you have to necessarily go to therapy for like 
like five years to get any sort of benefit. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash mylifeasava for 10% off your first month. And it's gonna go a long way. Just click the link, okay? Just click the link. And yeah, let's get into the rest of the video. Okay, before we get into the life updates, I did wanna show you guys my inspo board that I made a month ago. I think it would be important for you guys to see this because everything that's been happening in my life has just been a direct result of me working so freaking hard and like manifesting and goal planning and putting things into action. And like, I just feel like more people should be making inspo boards. Vision boards and inspo boards have always helped me. I've made them since I was literally like 10 years old. I'm not like praying over them with like candles around me. I'm not that type of like manifester, but I do reference my vision board at least once a week. Okay, so this is what's going on with the summer 2023 vision board. I made it because I knew I was gonna be gone for a while and I was just like, I don't wanna come back to New York in September. My whole aesthetic, like my whole vibe is gonna change when it's fall. I'm gonna be dressing different, acting different, doing my hair different, doing my freaking nails different, <laughs> moving different, shifting different, no, but. You know what I mean? Like if you romanticize things way too much, you would understand this. You are a different version of yourself. Summer you, fall you, winter you. They're all just, for me, they're all different. They're all different little like skins. You know, I just put it on. Suddenly it's like fall vibe, you know? This year I'm trying to be super narrowed down about like who I am, staying true to myself, pushing myself to just be the best version of myself, put more focus on what matters to me and not what matters to other people. Giving myself the chance to like, really be the main character in my life because one of the things that I realized I really wanted to work on was actually putting myself first. Tear, tear. I just had so many things that I'd been saying I wanted to do for so long and I just wasn't doing any of them. Okay, so this mood board, it's a lot of DJing, it's a lot of fashion, it's occasionally a couple travel photos, it's some quotes, you know. Everything I want wants me more. I wanna see what happens if I don't give up. I love this one. 20 years from now, you're gonna wish you had more fun, so have more fun. The best thing I ever did was believe in myself. Making this mood board, all the quotes on this mood board, it was really just like me reminding myself that I'm in the right place. Like I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't have those opportunities if I wasn't ready and I didn't deserve them. And then there's a lot of fashion stuff happening. There's like outfits, nails. Like this is gonna be my first ever year living in New York for fashion week. And I just feel like there's really just no reason that this year shouldn't be a fashion moment for me. Having all this inspo was kind of like my ideal summer style. And then lastly, I have some summer pictures, plane flights, the ocean, boats, you know, just the whole aesthetic because, you know, I wanna have a great summer, even though Pearson decided not to come to Europe this summer. I'm looking at you, Pearson. It's just crazy because every single time that I make an inspo board, it's not like I'm constantly referencing this board being like, oh, I have to shoot a photo that looks like this because it's on my vision board. It's just a vibe, you know? It's just to set set the tone. But then I'll go and I'll look back on my inspo board and it's just crazy. I could be like, a moment in my life happened just like that photo. Inspo boards definitely work. Just make one and that is literally enough sometimes to just get your brain and your mind and your just whole energy shifted towards that goal. It's crazy how well it works. Let's get into all the life updates. The first life update. I'm a DJ now. I'm a DJ now, bitch. I'm a DJ. Certified. It feels insane to be able to just claim that and feel confident in it. And I'll be honest, I'm still not 100% like, it hasn't set in yet that like I'm a DJ, like I am. I've been DJing for six years now, at least. I bought my very first mixing board, probably like 2016. I actually performed at the Amplify tour, if you guys were there in Australia. But I don't really consider that because I was just like so young. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't get serious about it until like 2019. So I have been DJing for a while, but for some reason, even though I've been DJing for so long, I never put myself in the position to make it my job. Even though I wanted so badly to be a massive DJ performing all over the world, I had that dream, I wanted it so bad, I never just went out and did it. And I think that's 100% imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm, imposter syndrome. I don't know what I was afraid of. It took me moving to New York and also getting closer to turning 30, which I know doesn't matter. I know when I turn 30, I'm gonna look the same. I'm gonna probably think the same. I'm gonna feel the same. Nothing's gonna change. I just felt like for me, I could not allow myself, like something mentally was just like this. Like 
I cannot allow myself to turn 30 and not be DJing. I would be so mad at myself if I knew I had the talent and the skill and the freaking energy to be a touring DJ in my early 20s and I didn't even do it until I was all the way out of my 20s. I think that's what kicked me into action. I think it took moving to New York and also just like being depressed all last year. That took me to realizing I cannot keep allowing imposter syndrome to stop me from achieving my dreams. I have to do this. No matter what challenges are in the way, how stressful or scary it is, I have to do it. Like I just have to. In late April, I played my very first show at the Public Hotel Club. And it was crazy because all these people were coming up to me after the show being like, you're the DJ, like that was the sickest thing. Like you were the best DJ of the night. Like you killed it. Again, with the imposter syndrome in my head, I was just like, they're just saying that because I probably <laughs> Cause I probably did horrible and they're just trying to make me feel better. Even though I knew I did great. I know that's not true. Like I'm self-aware. I know if I sucked at something, I know I did amazing. I fucking killed it that night. Playing that show gave me a boost of confidence where I was like, I want to do this every single day of my life. I want to DJ as much as possible for as many people as possible. I don't care if there's three people in the room or 10,000 people in the room. I love DJing. That feeling was so addicting. And immediately after I got off stage, I was like, my first thought was like, when can I do that again? So I go home from that show and I'm just like, okay, I don't have an agent. I don't have a manager for music. I don't have a and R. I don't have a freaking uh, record label. I don't have a booking agent. It is literally just me doing everything. Two weeks later, friends that I met at Coachella booked me to play the good room in Brooklyn, which is like a huge, well-respected venue. And this show was a cool show because I played whatever I wanted. Techno, and I played UK Garage, and I played like German house music. No one in the crowd knew what I was playing, but to see them so hyped and excited, something in that just like boosted my confidence and made me realize like I can play what makes me happy. People just gassing me up after the Good Room set. And I was like, you know what? I have so much confidence right now. But then after the good room, I was like, I don't know where I'm gonna play next. Like my luck is probably running out. No one's gonna call me. This was just a, a little lucky chance that I got booked at the good room. And then I got booked to play the Todd's Hamptons party for a luxury major fashion brand. And then I got booked to play a festival in Finland with a 9.30 PM slot with major artists headlining like Martin Garrix, uh, David Guetta, Rehab. I have the 9.30 slot for the festival. And they also booked me to headline the after party. I'm, I'm catching a wave right now with DJing. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't think it was going to be easy by any means, but I definitely did not expect it to be this time consuming and stressful and strenuous. Planning an event set, planning an after party set, and planning a festival set. When I tell you I have so much respect for DJs now, major DJs, any DJ that plays at a festival, I always respected them, but after being put in their shoes and realizing how much work goes into a festival set, y'all don't even understand. I wasn't sleeping, barely eating, because every single day of my life, I was at my computer making festival edits and special remixes. It's harder than, I, I, I honestly, could have painted a freaking Picasso painting. All the hours I put into this festival set, I could have literally built a small house. So much energy, so much love into this festival set. Into all these sets, oh my God. I wanted to give up so many times. I thought about pulling out of the festival. I thought about pulling out of the after party. Really, it felt impossible. It felt like there was not enough time in the world to do what I had signed up for. But I just had to keep telling myself, once this is all over and you get on the other side of it, you're gonna be so much smarter, have so much life experience, and you're gonna be really happy that you did it. I played the festival. It was insane. The people of Finland were the warmest crowd. I am so happy I did my first festival in Finland. If you are from Finland, Y'all go hard. Playing the festival, I feel like I like ascended out of my body and like reached a freaking like spiritual state where I was just like, holy sh Everything I've been working for since 2016 when I picked up my very first mixing board, it's led to this. 
and this is just the beginning. I was shaking before I went on stage to play the festival. I think playing the festival is the scariest thing you can do DJing because you have to be perfect. Like everyone is watching you. If you're playing a club, you know, people are dancing, people are drunk, people are like talking to their friends. They're not necessarily paying attention to like all your transitions and stuff. But if you're playing a festival, people are staring at you. Everyone is facing the stage. Everyone is watching you. So not only do you have to focus on like mixing everything properly, you have to also give stage presence. And I mix everything live. I'm not like pre-recording my sets. I'm not bullshitting over here. I'm really DJing up there. I know it's hard to believe, you know, a YouTuber can actually be up there actively mixing, but I'm up on that stage doing everything live. Playing the festival was definitely the most scariest thing. Cause I was like, if I fuck something up, every single person in this audience is gonna see that and they're gonna clock it, but I didn't and I killed it. And now I feel like I can finally claim that I am a DJ. And I'm so excited for where I'm gonna play next. I don't know where my next show is gonna be, but I feel honestly unstoppable right now. And yeah, I was featured in Vogue with the Todd's event. What is my life? So anyway, I know that was a long one, but that was the first life update, I'm sorry. The second life update is I turned 29. Oh yeah, baby, I'm 29. I had my birthday in Oslo. We had Indian food, we had cinnamon rolls, we went to the beach, I got a massage, I ate Norwegian candy. The night of my birthday, I actually ended up in a rave in the forest and we didn't leave that rave until like five in the morning. I honestly had the perfect birthday. I could not have planned a better birthday for myself. I don't know, it just felt really good. Turning 29, was something that, you know, seven months ago, I was really nervous for. I remember when I turned 28, I was just like, oh shit, like 29's right around the corner and 30's right up, up next. It's just crazy, like getting older and having conversations with other friends my age and like older friends of mine. We all go through that exact same process of being like, oh shit, I'm leaving my 20s. And as much as people wanna say like, oh, you're so young, like you're only 29, like you're so young, you cannot deny the human experience of turning 30. To sit around and deny all of those emotions, you can't deny feeling in a weird position in your late 20s. Like you just, you can't, you can't deny that. Getting into my late 20s, I've been reflecting so much about the last 10 years of my life and what my life was like when I was 20. You know, everyone always says like, your 20s are your best years of your life. Go crazy, be selfish. Like live your best life, wear mini skirts, like do all these things because you're only 20 once and blah, 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 blah. And honestly, I feel like if my 20s ended today, I have really lived them exactly how you're supposed to live your 20s. And I know that I'm not 30 yet, but I feel like the last nine years of my life in my 20s, I'm really proud of how I lived them. And I'm really proud of all of the crazy stuff that I did, all of the things that I was selfish on, all of the bad relationships, all of the break friendship breakups, makeups, travels, random European men. I don't know, I'm just, I'm really happy with how my 20s went. And I have one year left, it's this year, and I'm not like stressed about turning 30. I think I'm just wanting to live this year as the total main character, putting myself first, living my best life, enjoying myself, enjoying the people around me, honoring myself by DJing and being more involved in the things that I love. And I think that's what 29 is about. I think 29 is about me being a bad bitch for the last nine years and going out with a bang with 29, being the baddest bitch of all the years. Maybe that's a very Leo way to look at the last year of your 20s, but all I know is this year, it's gonna be a blast. Next life update, I'm the cover of Galore August. This is a freaking dream come true. And I put out a new song last month, Day and Night. So this is like, I'm just gonna combine these into one life update. You guys know I released music like two years ago and I still love all of those songs, but I took a big break from releasing music, not because I wasn't producing at all, um, I just wasn't releasing anything. You know, at the time I was progressing so quickly with like my production skills. You know, I had all these projects finished that maybe I made like two months ago, but two months later, I'm totally inspired in a new genre, a new direction. I was like, I don't necessarily want to be the artist right now. I kind of just want to be the student. So I didn't release anything for almost two whole years. But that whole time I was still producing, being in the music space, but like stealth mode and just 
soaking in new pieces and nuggets of inspiration. The older I get, the more that I realize not everything has to be go, go, go. Not everything has to be every single day. Not everything has to be every single week. The best things in your life happen when you fully just surrender to the flow of it all, surrender to the natural progression of how things are gonna fall, how things are gonna shake out. There's a season for everything and you don't want to disturb the natural seasonings of your life. So yeah, I put out my first song in a while. And if you wanna to listen to it, if you haven't listened to it already, I will have it linked down below. It's called Day and Night. And I just, uh, yeah, it's a great song. Also, I'm the cover of Galore August, which is insane. And we did a whole shoot. I creative directed it with Olaf. The whole shoot is inspired by literally my life. It's like a literally my life 2023 New York Ava version. And it's insane. So if you haven't seen it, I will link the article down below. Go read it. The photos are insane. The story's insane. I stopped doing PR for like three whole years because I just felt like every single time I would do an interview, the interview person would like cut up all my words and like not even get the message across. But with Galore, I'm so thankful and I respect them so much for actually leaving in pretty much every single thing that I said. It's just a really good article. So if you wanna read it, the links in the bio. And the last life update is, I just got back from Europe with Olaf and it's not a big life update, but we went to Mykonos, Sardinia, Paris, Oslo, Finland. We did the whole tour. I mean, it's not much of a life update, but it was really nice having a vacation with Olaf and actually being in a relationship finally, where we can go on a vacation that's a month long and not kill each other. That's maturing, okay? Maturing is realizing that you don't have to fight every single time you go on vacation with a significant other. But no, but like you, you guys have seen me go through some questionable, debatable relationships and Every single time I was in those relationships and we would go on vacation, it would always end in like so many arguments, so much drama. So it was really nice going on vacation with Olaf and actually just like being kids together and like having so much fun, swimming in the ocean, bonding, you know, like we were like best friends on vacation. So that was awesome. This trip really healed a part of me. This is what a great relationship dynamic is like. It's possible. Take it from me, personal experience. It, it shouldn't have to be like that. I guess that's life update. The last couple months have been a lot, but it's also been transformative in so many different ways. And the whole energy of my life right now, it just feels really sparkly and magical and amazing. And I just wanna live in this as long as I can. I didn't feel like this at all last year. I'm just trying to live in this as long as I can and appreciate it. And it honestly still hasn't even kicked in or I guess set in what I've even accomplished in the last couple months of my life. It's things that I've dreamt about since I was literally a kid. I don't think I've processed it yet, but I'm trying and yeah, so that's the update. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'm sorry if this was a long one. I'm gonna try to edit it down to be way shorter because I've been talking for like two hours. If you're still watching this right now, thank you so much for staying here till the end. I just feel like you're a real homie. I feel like we're closer after this video and I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you got maybe inspired in some way. If you feel like you related to anything I said in this video, comment down below. Let me know how you're feeling lately, how life's been going. If you have a goal that you're like hesitating on starting on, or maybe you have started on and things are going amazing. Just like tell me what's, what's going on in the comments down below. And yeah, other than that, I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys next week for a new video. We back, baby. Bye guys, love you. Flashing lights, I should see.